Hey guys, Rylan Russell here. Today we're going to talk about how to make a DIY baptistry for your church. Let's go. All right, so first of all, why would you want to make a do-it-yourself baptistry? Um, there's lots of reasons, but for us, our reason was that we have an old baptistry that is up kind of in the loft like the old style would be, and then we actually built a different screen in front of it, and we wanted to take baptisms and kind of make them more a part of our worship services instead of like this thing you observe up in the wall where you can't really even see it very well, and integrate it into our worship times. And for us, we really wanted to have that on stage. So I'm sure if you've been looking around for DIY solutions, you've probably run across this article on churchstagedesignideas.com. And we basically took that idea and ran with it. So let's walk through how to take a 550 gallon tank and transform it into a baptistry. So where can you purchase a tank like this? In the original article, they actually used, I think an 1100 gallon version of this but we purchased ours, a 550 gallon one from Tractor Supply. So if you have any kind of like farm supply store around you, go and check them out. Um, and you can get these as big or as small as you need them. Uh, we would have opted for the larger like 1500 gallon tank, but for us, with it being on top of our stage, we had a structural engineer in our church come and look at our stage. And he recommended not to go for the bigger size just because of the weight that would be there. We actually reinforced our stage with like car jacks on cinder blocks uh, for the area that our tank is on and we've never had any issues with that but that's something to consider so check out your local uh, tractor supply type store go and see how big of one you might need something to keep in mind is that you actually have to cut the top off of these tanks and why would you go to all this trouble? Well, if you go to purchase a portable baptistry, they can range anywhere from two to $3,000. This one that we purchased was around $500, and I think the bigger sizes are still less than $1,000. And they hold up really well because they're so thick and made for farm work that uh, we've used ours for years now and been really happy with it. All right, so you've purchased whichever tank you wanna get, black, clear, Whatever, we chose clear because you can light it up, it looks nice. And you can see the water line, all those nice things. And the first thing you have to do, find somebody with a steady hand, get a jigsaw or something that you think might work well with it. I can't remember exactly which kind we used, but be very steady because it is hard. It will want to get away from you. So you just go around the rim of the tank, cut that top off all in one piece, and it's a smooth finish on the top edge. We didn't need to treat it or put a pool noodle on it or anything. All right, so the next consideration is, how are you gonna fill this? For us, we just run hoses from a janitor's closet that has like a wash tub in it, and we hook those up and fill the tub up. Word of warning, do not leave the room while you're filling the baptistry tank. We have had an instance where it started spilling over the top because somebody forgot to turn off the water. Our solution for that is just to get a $20 little hose timer that you would use outdoors, hook it up, and that will save you a lot of frustration. So for the 550 gallon size, it's barely high enough for adults to be baptized comfortably. You could always get a metal stool or build a little cinder block step or something like that for people to sit down into the water. If you really want people to stand, then you might look at a larger pool or the larger size of the tank. Because once you cut the top off, you're looking at around mm, about, I'd say, 30 inches of height for water. Um, and you don't want to get too much fuller than that because it will overflow pretty quickly once you are actually baptizing people. So you got your tank, you got the lid cut off, you got the water in it. Now, how do you heat this? What has worked for us really well has been just to get a, a heater that plugs straight in and then it just sits into the tank and we heat it for about two days and we put a tarp over the top. It will take it from, you know, 65 degree water all the way up to 95 degree water um, by Sunday. So those work really well. You can get multiple ones. Um, it's lasted for a couple of years for us and it's been really good. I will link to that one in the description so you can check that out. 
Something else you have to consider is getting people in and out of the tub. Tall people have no problem. For a long time, we put a cinder block on either side of the tub, inside and out. We recently got some steps that are actually curved to the shape of the tub, and those have worked really well this last time that we baptized. So I will link to some that are similar to those that we bought uh, in the description. Another important thing that you need to do is have some type of anti-slip surface in the bottom of the tub. So we actually have some rubber mats that you can get at Lowe's. Ours are actually through a rental through CentOS that are made for kitchen work, but um, you just put them in the bottom of the tub and it really will help because it can tend to get a little slimy because they're just a plastic tub. And finally, to make it really all come together, add some LED lighting behind the tub, shine into the water, and it's just like this giant catch light, basically, for the baptistry. Okay, you just got everybody baptized. Now, how do you get rid of the water? Well, a sump pump is really all you need. Sink a sump pump in there, hook a hose to it, drain it in whatever place that you'd like to drain the hose. And once you have it almost completely drained, you can push that thing on down off your stage or onto a little dolly and take it outside, let it dry and store it wherever you like for the next time that you have baptisms. All right, so that's it. I hope that helps you if you are in the market for a DIY baptism solution. If you have any questions, leave them in the comments. I'll do my best to get to them and answer them. And remember, we can do a lot of great things. Let's do them all for the right reasons. Like and subscribe if that's your sort of thing, and we will see you in the next one.